What is up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Welcome back to the show. This is take two. We'll edit the first part out. Apparently, there was no audio. You guys can see there's a little something different about me today. Well, I'm back in the studio. I'm excited to be here. Normally, I'm doing this now from home, but uh, my internet went out at home. So here I am risking life and limb to bring you the show, but I'm being safe. I'm being smart. I'm wearing my mask here. There's only a few of us in the office, but we're going to be doing logo design redo today. And it's a little different than our normal format. First, we're only going to feature one person. We're going to talk about the logos you love to hate. Yes, that's right. We're going to take on a famous logo that everybody hates on Design Twitter, and we're going to redesign it. We're going to redesign it, and today joining us is the lovely Hadil Sayed Ahmad. And she's from Amman, Jordan. And if you guys want to check out her work, go to HadilAhmad.com. It's right there at the bottom. We'll include that in the show notes below. Here's some of her work in case you don't know who she is. Check out her work. Really beautiful stuff. And today she's chosen to redesign the Hilton Hotels and Resorts logo. Woo. She's going to have her hands full. I have no idea what she's going to do. But the first question I have to ask her is, why did you pick the Hilton logo? What is wrong with it? Are you crazy? Help me out. Hadil, why did you pick this logo? I'm not sure, Chris, if you can hear me. But, I can hear you. Um, I can't hear you. Oh. You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> We're oh, having one kind of problem Lord. after another. <laughs> Come on, Jonah. <laughs> Give me a sec here. What is going on? How many times do I have to do the intro? <laughs> Nothing changed. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> changed? You mean they still can't hear us? I'm not sure. Testing Mark, one, two, help three. us out. What about now? I can, yeah, can you hear I me? Can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark, did we have that? Is, it, is anything working, you guys? <laughs> I don't know. Is anything working? Yes? No? I think so. Can okay. you hear us? Hadil? So you can hear us. And until Mark tells us, the, yeah, show, the show will continue yeah. on. Thank you very much. So why did you choose... Yeah, on my end, I can hear you now. Okay. You can hear me. So why did you choose to redesign the Hilton logo? I'm going to explain it a bit. Yes. But it's, it has been a really rough week mm -hmm. redesigning Hilton. I don't know why I do this to myself every time. <laughs> I could have been... Uh oh, now we lost. Or really ugly and redo it. Right. But I really felt like Hilton, it needed a rebrand from a very long time ago. Yes. But I'm going to explain further. Okay. Um, if I can share my screen. Yeah. Okay, we can see it. Okay, awesome. So we're doing a rebrand for Hilton. Okay. But before we do a rebrand, we need to ask ourselves three questions mm -hmm. so why change and should the change be evolutionary or revolutionary mm -hmm. and what elements need to be preserved to, ma to maintain brand equity mm. it's the hardest thing that anyone can do is uh, is doing a rebrand doing uh, uh, creating a logo from scratch is way much easier because mm -hmm. you, you can put your concepts your your ideas and just go with it uh, doing a rebrand is very hard because um, you are afraid of losing the the sentiments and the attachment of the co the consumers to the to the brand. So I'm gonna explain more. What drove me into the decision that I did? Okay. So why Hilton? Um, Logo Inspirations, the the famous page on, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows in Logo Inspirations. Yes. I'm gonna say hi to Jonathan. Um, once uh, posted, um, asking people which brand would you would you rebrand or redesign the, their logo, mm -hmm. and they have placed Adidas, Hilton, Beyond Meat, and Virgin, Marvel, and some other uh, brands. Mm -hmm. So, almost almost eighty percent of the comments were about Hilton. Wow! And I love the comments. I picked <laughs> some of the comments and I've mm -hmm. added them. Mm -hmm. So everyone is saying it's the most dated. The most it dated. Looks so okay. boring. Yeah. Mm. I love this. The swoosh must die. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like something from the 90s. And it actually was designed in the late 80s, maybe. In the, the, I see. A very long time ago. So um, and, and, and the, the best comment was because it's time. 
It's well, time to, to do a rebrand. Yeah, Ricky asked me, what's wrong with the Hilton logo? He's not a designer, so he's like, why? What's wrong with it? In your words, in your professional opinion, what don't you like about the mark itself? First, you should fire him. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it done. Ricky, you're fired. <laughs> Live on air. Yeah, <laughs> because it's really outdated. You see, the swoosh is really old. Mm -hmm. The cuts on the, uh, the the letter H is very old. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the serif font is really uh, out of this world because, you know, all the brand, other other competitors are, are doing uh, um, clean and modern serif uh, logos. And it's a trend now. Mm -hmm. It has been in the the last couple of years. All all of the major brands are rebranding into a much simpler, mm. cleaner, modern uh, logo. So this one is very old, but it's really tri tricky to redo. Yeah. So the H Hilton has been changing their logos. It hasn't been this one forever. But the 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 changes were. Uh, very minor. So if you can see the slides, mm -hmm. I can the see first it. logo was the Hilton family. And then they updated the logos and this one in the middle was done by Landor. It's a very famous uh, brand, branding one agency. One of the biggest. Yeah. Uh, and they did the Hilton Worldwide, which is the mother company. And the Hilton Honors, which is the, the uh, awards uh, program for the, the customers for Hilton. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Hilton Hotels and Resorts logo. So the, the, the one in the middle, you can see that they changed the Hilton Worldwide and the, the H Honors uh, logo. But they didn't change the Hilton, they just changed the font. Okay. It's, st it's still a serif font, but it's 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 a bit modern, but it's not that that okay. Mm -hmm. And the colors were very dark blue and an earthy color. Mm -hmm. And I want to take the chance and say that I've been working with Hilton here in Jordan uh, around maybe two years ago. They were opening a new branch in the Dead Sea. And I've managed to do every single design for the hotel, from the reception to the management, to the staff, to the in-room, to the uh, restaurants, the beach, everything. Mm -hmm. Every single piece of printable, I've, d I've d done that for Hilton. Mm -hmm. So I'm familiar with the brand, and that's another reason why I, I'm doing Hilton. And I'm related to it. And when I did the, the, the designs, we were using this one in the middle, which, which had the dark colors and the earthy colors. And it was also during the, the design process when where, uh, while I was working with them, I was always asking them to change the colors and change the identity. It was really, really old. So there, there was a rebranding, but didn't include the logo. They did that maybe in the last year. They changed the colors. They are using a lighter blue color, which is they now call dark blue and the light blue and magenta and a gray color. And they changed the logos also for Hilton and Hilton Honors, which is way much better than the ones in the middle. Right. Just simple ones. And other other competitors have changed their logos. So Sheraton, they, they upgraded their logos and they're using a, a sans serif font. You can see how clean it is compared to the original one. Marriott as well, Holiday Inn, which I don't like, but it's be much better than the previous one. Acor, Ibis, and, and, and many others. So why Hilton isn't improving? And I just want to, to, to add something. I'm adding a footer at the end of each slide. Uh, you, you remember the decisions roadmap that, that, that I do. So to make it more reasonable for everyone, I've added, added a footer. Every slide I add, I'm having a foot, footnote that it, that's the conclusion of this slide, it's telling me that the logo needs to catch up with other competitors who have already updated their logos. I see. So you're okay. showing the evolution of these logos and there's a question mark next to the, what Hilton should be doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. why aren't they cha changing? Mm. So here's um, a positioning, visual com positioning of the old logo with the main competitors. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see some are very clean, some are also in need of a rebrand. And a rebrand is uh, maybe it's not a good fit in this case because we're doing a redesign of the logo. A rebrand should include a redesign of the identity as well. Yes. But I'm not doing um, a rebrand of the identity this time, just minor fixes and yeah. edits. So let's call it a redesign. And this is, the, this is the second question. Should the change be evolutionary or revolutionary? When doing a rebrand, you, you can not pick either one of these two. If it's evolutionary, it means that you're using the same elements of the old logo and just making them much more cleaner and simpler with minor, with less elements. There's a DK, Citroen, Starbucks, just some of the famous brands here. Yeah. A revolutionary branding, it means it's it's a total change. It doesn't look like the old one. So FedEx, and they even changed the name from Federal Express to FedEx, Animal Planet, done by Shermayev, and GoDaddy, the new one, BP, Juventus, Converse. So Hilton should uh, go under the evolutionary branding. And why is that? That's why that that's because we need to maintain brand equity. And what's brand equity? It's the value of a brand's name from the cons consumer's perception, which is measured when a consumer is ready to pay extra for a certain brand over another. So when you have a, a regular cotton shirt, it may may cost five dollars, but when you add the Nike swoosh, it, it would cost like fifty or seventy. That's the the simple definition of brand equity. And Hilton has established a strong brand equity, which enabled to expand into other hotel names. So they have under their names, 17 world brands. With this, here's a simple infographic of their numbers. It's one of the biggest hotel brands in the world. So we don't want to mess with this uh, image that the, the, the hotel has. And we want to ha have a drastic change to the logo. So uh, consumers won't feel detached from the brand. Here's some. Here, here are their their sub brands, and Hilton Hotels is the the flagship brand. And the the owners is their award. So, the, so they have three logos: the the worldwide one, the mother company, the hotel and resorts, one of their their full service hotels, and the owners award program. So what I did when I changed this, I changed as well these two, so they are consistent. Okay, this is the Hilton Honors program. Here's a here's an explanation about it. Okay, now Hilton has created a new brand identity and a new brand strategy. They have changed their positioning, their brand voice, their personality. It's now much more vibrant. It's it's younger now, it's energetic. And they they added a frame, this frame. They are using, using it on social media and or in their printables. And they've uh, chosen two uh, new um, font families, this one and this one, which adds vibrancy to the to the identity compared to the the dark blue and the earthy colors they were using before so we are keeping this but we are also doing some minor edits so here's the, uh, uh, some screenshots from the hilton websites as you can see here's the use of the frame and the and the, and the fonts it's called low they're using heavy bold and regular and the simple joys simple joys is this one this is for emphasis and I've went online I've, and I've picked their brand guidelines and I've studied them well so I don't miss and you know, this is this is a real rebrand. I don't want just to come uh, come up and do what I do and create an amazing identity, a new identity. I just need the logo to fit the current brand that already exists. They can just take the new logo and use it just the way they are using everything right now, just with minor edits. And here's some of their printables. It's much, much more vibrant, as you can see. Here's their story, how they are using typography. Here are some posts and some printables they're using with the frames and the typography. I'd like to just uh, kind of jump in here really quickly and say, I'm always yeah. so impressed by you, how thorough you are, and the level of your thinking 
there are different levels of designers. And I just want to take a moment to point out that some designers would get into it and just purely attack this on an aesthetic level. I think that's totally fine. But you've, you've dug into the website to study the brand architecture, the brand guidelines, to make sure that you're treating this as if Hilton handed you $2 million and said, hey, we, we need some help. We want to update this. We want to be modern. And we want to hold on to the brand equity you have. I like how serious you are in taking these things on. Always impressed. Ha hats off to you. So keep going, please. Thank you. I'm hoping we do sell this to <laughs> Hilton. Hilton, if you're paying attention. I like the $2 million, <laughs> $2 million part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need to do that. That 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 was really hard. It, it, it took me around seven days of extensive research mm -hmm. and understanding the brand because I could could uh, have taken the easiest way and just go for a crazy logo and amazing identity that doesn't fit the brand and they will have to reprint everything and it will cost them so much money. But keeping everything the same and just improving the logo, which should have been improved De a decade ag ago right. is going to help the brand. I hope they, they can see this. So this is this is from the, their brand guidelines. The, the brand persona, the personality and the voice. It's more friendly. It's exciting. It's energetic. It's vibrant. So this should be reflected on the logo and the identity. They are doing great with their identity. But the logo is lacking. Um, this is their tagline. I was going to change it, but I think I don't want to mess around a lot with the brand. So we're keeping it. We are Hilton. We are hospitality and they're using their, the, this is the exact same tagline they are using with the fonts. And by the way, this is Hilton did see, this is a picture from the, mm. the, the actual site. It's an amazing site. Um, hoping with everything is, uh, is done with the COVID-19 and the quarantine. People can come to Jordan and visit the Dead Sea. It's amazing. And here's another picture from the Brad guideline, how to use the Simply Joy, Simple Joyce and the Low font. So I took the footer from every slide, uh, which, which are the conclusions of everything that I've, I've showed you. And I've added them to my decisions roadmap. I've done this before, you've seen it before. I do this every time for every project I do. I don't show it to my clients. I rarely do. I just use this to guide me. So talking about the, the, the logo execution should be modern, clean, to fit with the new identity. The logo has the same lockup of the current logo. We don't miss, we don't want to mess with the, with the lockup. So the, the, the symbol should be on top and then the name and then the, the hotels and resorts should be uh, at the bottom. The, the logo should use lines. So as the frames are the hero of the identity that they are using, it's used a lot all the time. It's the hero of every visual they are uh, creating. So we should take this into consideration and it should be used in the, in the logo and the logo should be symmetrical and contain, contains the letter H. Changing the font from serif to sans serif and use their own uh, typo typography and the font families they are using, which is low. This is the, the main one they are using. I'm going to use it again on the logo. So we are tying the logo to their existing identity by using the same one. So what I did, I was exploring many ideas. I went crazy. I'm going to show you some of the, the explorations I was doing, just staying within the decisions roadmap that, the, the, that I came up with. But what I kept coming back to is this logo, the, one of the original logos there that Lander did. This had a very good concept, but the execution was lacking or it was really bad. I don't know what the, 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 the year, the, this was, was done in, in 2009, 2009. Okay. So it feels like it was done in the 90s again. I'm not sure why they did that, but I li loved the concept. It's, uh, it's written um, on the website under consideration uh, brand new. If you're familiar with brand new, they take all the rebrands and they showcase them into blog and then on articles. So this is from the press release from Landor. They're saying the platinum, platinum and gold stylized edge. This is the edge. Box quality, stature and richness of Hilton's heritage. The two halves are reflective 
which are a reminder of the company's storied past and vibrant future. And I really love this concept. I couldn't come up with something better. And the open curves are welcoming, symbolizing the world of travel, the round edges, blah, blah, blah. What was wrong with this version? It, it's, it was a cheapened version of what could have been a solid corporate identity. And this is the, the, the opinion of the website of Brand New. They are very familiar with, with rebrands and with they, they write articles every day about rebrands, so they know what they with. They have a strong opinion about this, and I agree with everything they said. The, the logo is very old. old, old. The, the, the two um, words are not matching. Um, the font is really thin. Um, I don't like the, the lockup. Why it feels like they just placed it there, there and the, the 3D and the emboss effect is, is really bad. But the concept is strong. So I took the concept, sorry, I want to show you the video. And I came up with a, with a cleaner version, the same concept, but with a cleaner version. I'm going to show you the video of the local process now. Okay. And let's dive into... So I took the logo, the original logo of Hilton. I added the, 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 the guidelines just to give me a sense of where everything should go. It doesn't have to be to the T, but I just have to, to, to stay consistent, as we mentioned, to maintain brand equity. Um, when people look at the new logo, they feel like it's the older lo old logo, but in a cleaner uh, execution. So I took one of the, the, the lines of the edges, uh, the letter H, and I started with that. I needed to align it with the grid perfectly. This is a really calculated logo. It's really simple design, but it took so much time to come up with the dimensions and the, and the measurements. So what the video you're seeing is, uh, I've, I've, I've trained on it maybe like six to seven times to, come, to do it so fast, but the iterations took maybe around two or three days to come up with the exact measurements wow. uh, and execution. Simple logos are really hard. Mm. That's why they should cost so much money. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me why it's important for you to get the, the measurements and the ratio so it's visually correct. So when you do, when you add anything else, when I'm, I'm adding the, 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 the text and when I'm adding everything, it looks balanced, it looks symmetrical. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Other than the OCD part and all designers. Right. So what I'm doing is a, a negative space etch. It's actually two, two letter etches. Two letter etch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> etches is not right. So i um, doing a negative space etch inside the bigger one, which is taken from the, uh, the original logo. And what I did is just play with the angles. I'm doing a 45 degree angle here, just to make the logo a bit more dynamic than it is static. You can feel like it's opening, it's coming towards your face. It's in a 3D effect, but in a very clean execution. Yeah. I think and, the perspective lines yeah. draw you in. It's like yeah, a door that exactly. opens and say, welcome. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you're going to see that in the explanation next. Uh, it, it looks like many things. It's really simple, but it looks like many things. It's, it's welcoming. It's like open doors. It's also the concept from the two edges and the reflectiveness of the past and the future. I'm going to show you the explanation when the video is uh, is over. I'm using the font they are using already, low, in, in bold and uh, medium, I think. Mm -hmm. What typeface is and that again? It's called low. Low? Yeah, but okay. it's spelled L-O-E-W, I think. Okay, yeah, low. Mm -hmm. It's a nice typeface. Yeah. It's kind of extended. Yeah, I like it. it's really clean. Yeah. Yeah. And I've placed the, the registered mark here. I didn't put it down. It's something to do with um, visual manipulation. So when your eye looks at the registered, you see that the logo starts from this tip, not from this tip. This is the extension. So these are minor decisions that you take to add to, your, to, the, to the logo design. Mm -hmm. 
and here's the before and the after. So here's the final logo. Mm -hmm. It looks, looks really, really good. Simple. It looks clean. Mm -hmm. I love it, but it's really scary. <laughs> Why is it scary? Because, because it's really simple, and I don't like to do really clean and simple logos. You know, you, you, if you're familiar with my work now, mm -hmm. I always have some something added, but I think it speaks for itself. And the, the second thing is it's a little bit risky doing something really simple because there might be something out there that looks like it. Yes. But as long as um, it's coming out of a concept and uh, I did my research and didn't find something that looked exactly like it and Hilton can go and trademark and register it. So I think they're, they're, they won't be having any problem. And if they do, it's going to be a really good success because having really simple logos is really hard to register just as um Tagi habib once said um, they were lucky to register and trademark the marks they have done before because there were not that many number of marks and logos out there so if they do uh, register this one it's going to be a really good one i think yeah hoping uh can we pause here for a minute i just want to talk about the logo the mark that you came up with do you have the ability yeah. to zoom in Sure. Okay, great. So I'm looking at the logo here, and I think there's some really great things. And I want to talk about a little bit about the scary factor about working within restraints. And it's hard. This is the sign of really talented designers who have experience and are mature. Because the tendency is for designers to add things to, to marks and to, to packages and things when you should actually be taking things away. You should be really thoughtful in what you add to something just because you feel like it. And so these are the most difficult marks to create for sure because you have to balance unique concept with simplicity. And this is why some of the biggest firms like Landor, uh, Pentagram, and say Collins, that's the challenge. It's hard to like work within these constraints and come up with something and they're the ones who get paid the most money. It's contrary to what you guys think, that if you add a lot of flourishes and gradients and decorative elements, that you'll get paid more because you worked harder on it. It's actually very hard to do these kinds of marks. The other thing I like about your mark right now, the symbol, I could see that working in many different ways, translating into patterns and icons and just, it's so adaptable and so simple in its presentation that I think it's going to last a really long time. It doesn't feel dated. And I think what's interesting about the corners in which you've kind of tweaked to kind of create these perspective lines is that it kind of lives between a serif typeface and a sans serif typeface. It's kind of cool, this optical illusion that because of those pointed corners, it feels a little like a serif, but it's not. So I think you've done something really cool here. Um, happy with your feedback. <laughs> yeah, everybody see. on the internet's loving it yeah they're loving it yeah they love the process and i think they like the simplicity of it but i i could really see this on a hilton hotel so kudos yeah this is exactly what i was hoping to hear because this this feeling is what i got just today because the 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 the, the as you said chris what we do when we add too many elements to a logo and we feel like it looks amazing. I just go to the layers and start deleting one item at a time mm -hmm. until I think that it looks good enough and it's functional. It doesn't need those other elements. To, to, till yesterday, I had a star on the logo. I'm going to show it to you now. Okay. And I was convinced that this is the right direction. Mm. And when I removed it, I thought it looks really much better. So sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. I so also want to take a moment here to say something yeah. about the the, what, the the colors that you're wearing and the way that your shirt is glowing. You look kind of like a design angel today. It's kind of like really, you're like floating out there. It's like, wow, you just need some wings and you're good to go. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm changing the black, giving you some <laughs> optimi optimism. Yes, I feel it. I love time. the blue and the white yeah. combination. It's excellent. Um, it's in sync with the brand. <laughs> so thoughtful. Okay, what are you, you going to show so, us now? Um, it's the logo explor exploration. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not this one. 
I did like 100 local explorations. Oh my gosh. And I picked some to show you the evolution until I got to this simple mark. This is what it takes, guys. It really does. Pull it looks like, hey, I can I can whip out what Hadil did in one second. And you can once you see the finished result. But there's a process here. And I could totally see this happening in real life where you would go in and you would present rounds of exploration. And then you would go in with a recommendation and say, this is where we think you need to be. And this helps the client feel like, yeah, I paid for this exploration and there it is. Yeah, well, and, and ju I just picked the top ones. Mm -hmm. I went into so many explorations. I usually don't do that, but it's really a hard rebrand, going with the right balance as we discussed everything. And there's so much work that goes behind simple logos. It's not just, uh, I can do this in five minutes. So let's go further. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to stop here. Okay. Just. Okay, so here it is on their famous blue color. And here's the concept again. Um, it's a vibrant future reflected from the storied history. So here's the past, the representation of the past and the uh, representation, representation of the future. This is the concept taken from the original logo from Lander. So mm -hmm. I'm building on an older version and many brands do that they go back to an older version and they, they just make it a little bit better mm -hmm. and it's it stays in the minds uh, of the consumer it's not, not like i'm doing something really drastic that they feel like it's what is that it's not hilton right so again that evokes quality stature and richness remember there's an, a negative space etched so over there two itches um reflective representative the company past future there's a hotel building you can see an arch of a bridge post of, of a bed an open door you can see all of these in this logo you can see anything that's related to hospitality and this is the most important one i really needed this effect i have a question here for you adil yeah this is coming from Ciara. She's asking, I'm so interested to know, how does Hadil find the time to do all this research and work for logotherapy while also doing paid work? How many hours did she put into all of this? It's amazing. So I'm wondering the same thing. Um, thank you, but I don't have a social life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even see my own family in my own home. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, camping here in my office around between 10 to 16 hours a day. I have my projects. I'm writing the book. I'm doing, I'm part of many organizations and uh, I'm the founder of Designers Union. You know, you know all of yes. that. So um, I'm trying to put as much effort as I can now because now I can grow. I want to be the best branding designer in the world mm. so now now it's the time to do that i'm not sure in a couple of years uh, I've, I've, I'll, I've, I'll, um, i can be uh, able to do that so yeah. that's why i'm putting all this and i love it i love designing logos i love designing identities i love branding i love design i love our community so that's what keep keeps me going mm -hmm. so and thanks for that input remind us about your book project again yeah, I'm designing a book. It's called designing. I'm writing a book, actually. Mm -hmm. It's called How to Design a Logo. And it's been helping me first in my design process because it's written. Even the most professional designers need a guide that tells them now the next step, step is this one and then this one. And if you're having any issues, you can do this and you can do that. So it's a step by step guide to help designers and companies and agencies do effective logos. I'm not going to say beautiful logos. Right. So they should be effective and functional. Uh, and I uh, believe it's going to be a huge, huge help for the design community. So I'm very excited to launch it. I'm going to need another three months, I think, to okay. finalize everything and do the designs for the book. I'm doing everything by myself, which, which is time consuming, but really fun.
to do. Well, will you re- let us know when the book is ready to, to launch so that we can share it with our fans and friends here? Yes, absolutely. We're, I'm going to do a launching campaign. I'm going to contact you and everything, everyone else. And Beautiful. Can't wait. Yeah. Me too. Very okay. Excited. Some feedback here that's coming in. I just want to read you some of the positive comments here. Niao is saying, Hadil's process is always amazing. Great to watch. Decibel is saying, wow, this is extraordinary design thinking. Very good. Thank you, everyone. And um, because I also get nervous when I do lives, but I do two every month, but that's something in an the, the introvert inside me mm-hmm. um i always get nervous but when i hear um positive feedback and and i, I see people are learning even a little bit for me um, i get really excited mm. so great you're teaching continue. a lot of people right now i hope so i really hope so because when i started i didn't have anyone that taught me anything i was looking for any inspiration and a mentor or even someone to ask a question and i didn't get anyone so i hope i can do that for people hey deal so, so speaking about yeah. learning um I, I think a lot of people are just wondering you know how um, you looked into this research do you have any tips other than just going to their websites or maybe even the agencies and uh, just understanding what these brands are and their history. Yeah, first of all, you're going to know about the brand. You go to the source. So, you know, you, you need to know about their history, dig deeper. So if I if I haven't dig, dig deep in their history, I wouldn't have learned that they used the old logo from Landor and the, 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 the older versions and why they did it. Um, you go to the website and read. You go to Wikipedia. Which, which is not a really good source, but it, it, it helps a lot. You go to their social media and you, you, you read what's the, what are the people um, talking about the brand, uh, how, how do they feel about it. And then you come up with, uh, and you, you see who are their competitors and you study their competitors and you go through everything again, their history, their websites, their social media, and so on. And then you start your design process. You start, start start building the decision roadmaps, and you get all the keywords and build a mind map. My mind that mind map now is very extensive. It includes a list also of of other criteria that I should research. So I research jewelry, I research luxury brands, I research every other industry that is related with uh, with the hospitality business because you, ca- you can't find inspiration in the hospitality business because there's nothing uh, as, yeah, I mean, there's no certain icons or visuals that represent hospitality in general so it's it's hard just like banks as well so you're gonna dig deeper in other industries to get to get inspiration i look into posters i look into um, uh, calligraphy i look into pattern designs and everything just I just do exploration for around maybe four constant days and I write everything on a piece of paper or a stack of paper which I have here right here by um, by my side I, uh, as long as I'm doing the project I have a long stack of paper that's um concluded from every everything that i do and i write them on paper and then i vectorize them on uh, on illustrator mm. yeah that's it thanks for so, answering that uh, yeah and sorry for my english today because i'm just a bit, little bit nervous i think that i'm not mastering my <laughs> you're doing great <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so what, what else were so, you going to show us yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the clear space and the, the, the grid and the measurements that I did. Okay, this took two days, guys, to do. Not, not the actual drawing, but to get to the, the exact measurements. So I really want clients to appreciate the, the, the hard work that designers put into building their logos. Having the T-centered under the, the, the icon took a lot of work. I worked on kerning and the, the, the spacing between the letters until I got the T exactly under the, the symbol. I used the, the golden ratio 
um, I'm not sure I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop posting or showing that I used the golden ratio in my projects, but some people asked me to place the golden ratio to show you how it's done. It's really simple. The golden ratio is just used to visually balance the, the measurements of each element in the logo and the relationship between these uh, um, elements. So the spacing and everything. So here's the, uh, the responsive logo. It's used when, when it's, it's, it's uh, in small places. So you do, do this all the time. And here's the before and after. You can see it's kind of mirroring. The, the width of the icon is almost the same and the, the height the, the, and the typography is close except for the serif and the sans serif. And I took the same um, typography from the, the, the logo type. I took it and I redesigned the Hilton Worldwide and the Hilton Honors, keeping the same frame, just making sure it's the same thickness here and uh, did some measurements that it looks much more cleaner and it's more consistent with the, the new logo. And here's the local lockups with and without hotel resorts, resorts. And this is used on hotels where it's really narrow to put a stacked one. So this is the old logo and their current identity. They are using frames, but the frames that they are using now are really thick. I think they are more thick than this one. And you're, they're using the, the, the new fonts. And the coloring is, re, is a bit dark, the overlay they are using. So what I'm suggesting with the, with, with, with the new logo is keeping the frames, but by making them much smaller. And uh, they are near the edge. So they don't come over the pictures or over, uh, overshadow any elements in the visuals and just get, uh, keep using the same colors and the um, fonts they are using. This is their website. As you can see, the typography is looking very good. I like, really like how they're using this. We're changing the logo here and the Hilton. And here's on the apps in comparison of other brands like Marvin Peck, Sheraton. It's really legible. You can see it, you can read it even. It's like on the screen, it's one centimeter, so you can read it. And one trick that I use to make sure that a logo is legible, I place my thumb over the logo. I make it really small and I place the, my thumb over the logo. If it fits on my thumb, on my nail, and it's still legible, then it's working. That's a good rule of thumb. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> I, actually, <laughs> I actually named it in the book, The Rule of Thumb mm. as well. So <laughs> thank you for that. This is Hilton, New York. If you're familiar with the hotel, I just um, erased the, the actual logo, the, 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 the current one they put and placed the, the new one. So it looks clean. When I, uh, I placed the, the other um, ones that I designed, they, it, just didn't feel right. This one just felt right. Here's on the building. Here's the use from the, the horizontal one. Here's the fonts they're using and the vibrant colors they're using. And here's an icon set. Of course, the icon set can be expand. The, the um, criteria is to use line icons that have cut edges so they reflect the, the logo design. And we're going through some mock-ups, Chris. I'm not going to do a million ones. <laughs> just 999,000. <laughs> like yeah. 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 <laughs> just 120. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to using, uh, uh, and I've created a pattern. Mm -hmm. It's a really simple and delicate pattern. The pattern took so much work because, because I needed to do something that is really subtle, mm -hmm. that doesn't overshadow anything and doesn't look gimmicky. Just jump to, something to add. A, a bit of texture to, to, to everything that's related to Hilton. Just keep it simple and clean. Here's an ad. And here's another tip. While you present for presentation, I like to go and pick pictures that belong to the same model. So you're going to see the same model 
going through this, the presentation. So it's like telling a story. She's coming to reception and she's now in her room. I'm going to show you extra things just by using the same photographer or the same model, the same lighting. It's it's really consistent. So you feel it fits to the with the brand. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip. Yeah. And here's some mock-up in the room. You can see the pattern used very lightly, very, very subtle way and the logo over here. And here's an espresso cup with her looking the robe and some shoes. And the, 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 the new identity of Hilton allows it to be more approachable and fun. So they can go, even if they are, uh, they are a luxury brand, but they can speak more to their consumers, like welcome home, the slippers say, step into the comfort zone, just make it um, really friendly. Okay. Here's one. Cosmetics. You can see the pattern used in the backgrounds and the frames are still there, but they are really near the edges. They are not overshadowing anything. And here's the a comparison of the new logo with, with the competitors of Hilton. Yes. Uh, I think it looks clean. Um, it looks modern. It sits well between its competitors. And here's the final slide showing the, the evolution of every, every other logo. And there you go. That's it. Very good. First of all, round of applause. <laughs> OK. I, I have some requests because I could see everything really sharp. But uh, the live stream, I guess because everybody's live streaming right now, it's kind of hard to see. Can you zoom in on the pattern? Because I wasn't really able to see that because uh, the compression. People are asking about the pattern because I know you're so good with patterns. It's a skill I do not possess, sadly. It's a really simple one. I was, was just a little bit. The PDF is not. It's not cooperating with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because on Zoom calls, the computer gets a little yes. bit slow. We're I almost there at the end. Now. Hold on, computer. Hold on. Yeah. Hang in <laughs> there. Yes. I've lost the internet. The file got corrupted. Everything went bad today, but we are surviving. Yes, we are. We're doing the best that we can. Yeah. So the pattern mm -hmm. are the two, the, the edge, the one in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I just repeated them in lines. That's it. When I did an exploration, the explorations for the pattern, I did all the crazy things that I do usually, but it made the brand look cheaper. Yes. And maintaining, uh, again, it, I, you should always resist the, the urge to create something really over the top when all you need is just a simple pattern. Other hotels, they don't even use patterns, but I thought it had some usage. It, it fills uh, some spaces. It adds texture. It's just this one rotated 90 degrees and repeated in simple yes. lines. That's it. The other thing I want to take a look at is the, the ad or the website with the frames or the border. I have a comment on that with the hand, handwritten typeface looking thing. Do you know which one I'm talking about? You said you want to yeah, make yeah. the border thinner. So I have some... Um, yeah, that without that that is their original website. Mm -hmm. I didn't do a redesign for it. Right. I was going to do a redesign that is much cleaner. It should be filled with images, pictures, and just have white typography over it. Mm -hmm. The PDF is really slow, so bear with me. Sure, please. no problem. This one. Um, actually, you had one that was side by side with the new logo and the old logo. And then you made the ah, border. One. Yes, this one. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. I have some thoughts on this. And this is just my input here in that I think you were so respectful of the brand guidelines and working within that, that uh, I, I applaud you for that. Personally, just, just me. I hate that script typeface or whatever that hand typeface is. And it's yeah. killing the design. It really is. And it's just hurting me inside. A little designer inside me cries to see such a beautiful logo that you created that feels timeless that feels upscale, 
that actually elevates the brand, in my opinion, maybe more than it needs to be for the positioning. I, I would yeah. have loved just to see a different typeface choice that may have some personality, but not so over the top because it's fighting it the whole time. The last little comment I'll make is, is the border. I actually prefer the original border. I know it's not a big deal. It's just a minor little point. But when you have the border from the original, it's thick and it looks like it frames the shot. It looks like you could be here, step into this world. Whereas when you make the border thinner and you push it out to the edges, it just feels like a border. It doesn't act as a window. And that's just my opinion. But those are only two little things I have to say. Otherwise, excellent job. Amazing. They would be so lucky to buy this from you for $2 million. Again, Hilton, if you need some help, you know who to reach out to. If you're the, uh, the chief marketing officer, chief brand officer from a competing hotel, and you're thinking, damn, she is good. I need some help. You know who to reach out to. We'll include her information in the description down below. I'm seeing a lot of comments in here. Very positive, super supportive. People are like, my, they're native English speakers. They're like, my English is not even that good. So <laughs> you're doing great. And I just can't, I can't even imagine how much work you put into this. And it's just, it boggles my mind every time you come on the show and you do what you do. And you're such a busy person. You're, you're a mom. You're running different studios. I mean, you're trying to help the community of designers, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if people want to find out more about you, what's the best place to find out about you, Hadil? Um, Behance, Instagram, and my website. Mm -hmm. I'm at Hadil S. Ahmad everywhere. Hadil S. Ahmad? S. Ahmad. Ahmad. Yeah. Yes. And my website everywhere. is Hadil Ahmad. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to be posting this live to the Behance page uh, as per your yes, tradition? I yes. Will. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, I think tomorrow. I'm okay, guys, give her a break. <laughs> give her a break. You know, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of crazy things going on. Internet's breaking. The reason why I'm here in the studio is because my internet connection went out and there's no way I'm going to screw this up. So I had to drive in here. Hence the explanation of the mask. I am in here with the studio with a few people. I'm just playing it safe. I also want to, to make sure my wife isn't scared. She's always concerned that I'm going to get the coronavirus. Okay, that was amazing. Let me put this up again. Where are we here? I'm going to put this up. You guys, let us know what you think. This is the original logo, the one on the left with the circular leaf-like puddle drop kind of thing with the, the icon H and the Hilton with the serif typeface. That's the original on the left. And Hadil's more geometric. There's something beautiful about this. It's, it's doors. It's two H's. It's reflective with a simpler sans serif typeface and it still honors the original tradition and um, the ideas of the original mark, just interpreted through a different lens. This is the power of good design. This is the power of design thinking that two people can read a design brief and interpret it very differently. Okay, so this is how you guys get in touch with her. I know people were panicking like, oh my God, I, uh, how do I absorb all this information? Well, tomorrow she's gonna post this on Behance, which she always does. Then you can go slowly and in vivid, sharp detail, look at the work that she put into this and all the research that she did. Hadil, thank you very much for doing this. I know it was a big ask. And I just want to ask all of you guys that are tuning in, moving forward, logo therapy will not be the way it was structured. We're moving in this direction. We're only going to have one person at a time so they can go deeper and show us more of the process so that we don't feel panicked and rushed for time. But we're also going to be taking on things logos that you love to hate. That's it. On behalf of the entire team, Hadil, thank you very much for doing this with us.